and welcome to the season finale for the trigonometry series that I have been running on my channel. And this video is basically going to be reviewing all of the information, formulas, and techniques you need to know to be able to answer all these trigonometry questions in the exam in a concise as manner as possible. This is a kind of video for people who already know further pure trigonometry and they just want to refresh it in their minds before they head into an exam or they are revising it. And this is going to be the most condensed version of the information I can offer. All of this is covered in extremely full detail in the 23 videos I have put out before. And now at this point, I'm just going to get right into it. So basically, you need to know that radians are a measure of angles. In one full circle, you have two pi radians. Radians are denoted with a little c on in superscript in small writing on top of basically what the value of the angle is. This is as opposed to degrees, which has 360 degrees in a full circle. In the majority of situations where you are using trigonometric functions like sine, tangent, and cosine, and when it is not specified, it is most likely that, especially if things are being added or subtracted in pi's, that they are using radians. You would also need to know that for a given sector of a circle, a portion of a circle, with a radius r, an angle theta, and a length l, that the arc length l is equal to theta times r, and the area of a sector is equal to theta r squared divided by 2, where theta is always the angle in radians. You should also know about the three trigonometric functions. You have sine, which is the opposite over hypotenuse size of a right angle triangle, cosine, which is the adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent, which is the op opposite side over the adjacent side. And you can use this to find any side of a right angle triangle that you might need. For example, if this side is a, some constant a, the hypotenuse of a triangle, which is right angled is a, then the vertical one, given that this angle is theta, will be a sine theta, and this will be a cosine theta. And conversely, when you have the angle here, and this is a constant, you can divide by cosine theta or sine theta to get this side. When you know two sides of a right angle triangle, such as a and b, you can find the third side by using Pythagoras' theorem, that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Alternatively, that c is equal to the root of the sum of the squares of a and b. c is the root of a squared plus b squared. Additionally, you might need to use these techniques in 3D to solve problems with 3D trigonometry. When you are trying to find a distance in 3D between two points, first look at the vertical distance between the two points, then at the front to back distance between the two points, forwards backwards distance, then at the side to side distance between the two points. And you will end up with a line here. And the way you would calculate this is first, you take the distance down, and then you take the distance right, or forward and backward. And then there's a right angle here, you draw your hypotenuse in here, you calculate this from the side A and B, so this is root a squared plus b squared, and then if you have a movement left or right in the third dimension, you are left with a right angle triangle where one leg is the root of a squared plus b squared, one leg is c, and so this final distance is the root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared in 3D. That is how you find a distance in 3D. You can also find other things in 3D. For example, if two planes meet at a line and you have a triangle that is perpendicular to that to those planes, for example, if one plane is here and you have another plane here and there you have information about this triangle here where it's perpendicular to the plane on both of its sides, then you can work out information about the angle between the plane in terms of the triangle. And to solve these kinds of problems, it's especially important to note some special triangles, such as the triangle in a cone, which is simply rotated to create the cone. There's always an isosceles triangle in a right angled cone, where the base is above the set, like where the tip is above the center of the base. 
and some important formulas you need to know about the relationships between the angles of a scalene triangle, or any triangle for that matter, is firstly that you need to know the terminology that lowercase letters are used for side lengths and uppercase letters are used for angles. And two key formulas here are firstly that the area of a triangle is half times a times b times the sine of the angle between them, or c, in our triangle a, b, c, where the letters are opposite each other. So angle b is opposite side b, angle a is opposite side b, and angle c is opposite side c. The area is half a b sine c, or it's half b c sine a, half c a sine b, so on. It is just the two sides and the angle between it. And then you also have the fact that the ratio a over sine a is equal to b over sine b is equal to c over sine c. And this is when you have a set of an angle and a side that are, that are opposite from each other. And you also have an angle here or a side here. And you want to find out extra information about the triangle. So you have this. And you can also take the reciprocal of everything so that sine a over a is sine b over b is sine c over c. Additionally, you have the cosine rule, which states that for any scaling triangle, the side c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. And this applies to any triangle in the form I mentioned here, where the angles are opposite the labeled sides for the same letter. c squared is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. That is to say, the final side is equal to the square of the other two sides minus two times the other two sides times the cosine of the, of the angle between them. And you can also rearrange this to find C to know that C is the negative cosine of A squared plus B squared minus C squared over 2AB. And it is, this is really the fast way to get the angle out of a triangle where you know all three sides. Additionally, you may come across equations of trigonometric functions that just require you to solve for an angle theta. Angle theta might be inside an interval, and you might find that the trigonometric functions have done something to theta. For example, theta plus pi over 3. In this case, you need to in manipulate the intervals with what you know about inequalities to find information about this. And after this, you have to perform a substitution where you let, for example, the letter u be the angle inside all of the trig functions. And finally, you use the sine negative 1 or cosine negative 1 or even tangent negative 1 functions on your calculator, the inverse sine, cosine, and tangent, to find the angle. Additionally, you will often find quadratic equations where you have cosine squared theta plus sine theta equals a constant, or conversely, sine squared theta plus cos theta is equal to a constant. And you must pay attention to which term is not squared and turn the squared term into the other squared term, which is the same term as this one. And to get what I say, like for example, this equation has sine theta as the term by itself. So you want to turn cosine squared theta into sine theta by using the identity that a cosine squared theta is equal to a minus a sine squared theta for any real number a. So once you have this, you'll have your quadratic in the form sine a sine squared beta, I mean theta plus b sine theta plus c is zero. And you look at sine theta as the object you're solving for, not theta itself. You're trying to solve for the value of sine theta. And then you use an inverse trigonometric function to get the actual value of theta. Following this, it can be also useful to know that when they ask you to prove things like the fact that cosine 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, it's not required knowledge, but it can be useful to know that this is the case. Sine 2 theta is 2 cos theta sine theta. They will often give you the um, the sine a plus b, cosine a plus b, and tangent a plus b identities, which are sine a plus or minus b is 
sine A cos B plus or minus sine B cos A. And the fact that cosine A plus or minus B is equal to cosine A cosine B minus plus, meaning that if you take the top, which is plus here, you have to take the minus here. Minus plus sine A sine B. And finally, that tangent a plus or minus b is tangent a plus or minus tangent b over 1 minus plus tan a tan b. And it can be also useful to know that these can be used in the case where you're trying to find something like sine 3 theta or cosine 3 theta because they want you to basically use this identity where you set a is equal to 2 theta and b is equal to theta or something like that. For example, finding the double one, double angle formulas, you can use a is theta, b is theta, and so on, where you're just adding theta and theta together. And that is basically it. That is the vast majority of the content that you need to know for trigonometry questions on the exam. There are other types of questions which may involve stuff like calculus, but that's not being covered in this course. This is what you need to solve the pure trigon trigonometry questions in this exam. Additionally, you it may be useful to know the identity that tangent theta is sine theta over cos theta, as well as the fact that tan squared theta is sine squared theta over cos squared theta. And finally, that um, minus sine theta is equal to sine minus theta, as well as the fact that cosine theta is equal to cosine minus theta, because they are rotationally symmetric and regular symmetric functions, respectively. All right, so thanks for watching. This has been the season finale for our trigonometry series, and this should serve as a good review of what you need to do. Of course, in the end, the only way to be good at math is to do math, and I suggest that you find the practice papers and look out these trigon trigonometry questions from the papers and just do as many of them as you can in order to get the patterns into your head and in order to uh, like sort of increase your problem solving skills before the exam. Right, so it's been a good run. Thank you for watching.